Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at the exciting idea of having a zero for an exponent. What would this mean, right, if we have a zero for an exponent? And how do we know it should mean what it does mean? And I think one of the most exciting features, I think, of this investigation is that you really begin to realize um, how exciting it is to hunt for patterns in mathematics because it's really patterns that illuminate some of the most mysterious aspects of mathematics. So here we're going to do a little bit of pattern hunting and we're going to kind of tinker around with this problem until I would hunking, not hunking, oops, <laughs> pattern hunting. Here we're going to kind of tinker around and play with this idea to make sense of it. So first of all, let me set this up for you so you can play with it a little bit on your own first and you can look for the patterns uh, here and make your own conclusions. Here's what I mean. Let me start you off with something basic. 2 to the third power. This of course means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And then if we go to 2 squared, this of course is just 2 times 2, which is 4. And then if I have 2 to the first, that of course just means 2, which equals 2. And then the question is, right, what does 2 to the 0 need to equal, right? What should it equal? Now this is the information, of course, that we all start with. And in here, we have the ability to unlock a pattern that really defines what 2 to the 0 should be, but I don't want to ruin the fun for you. I think you should play with this idea for a moment on your own. So pause this video, take a look here, hunt for some patterns, and see if you can come up with an inference as to what 2 to the 0 should equal. And whatever your idea is, just make sure you can stand behind it, right? Whatever pattern you see, that's your pattern, so stick to it. All right, pause the video and see what you can find. All right, welcome back. Um, first, let me tell you the most common response I hear um, when, when people look at this pattern. Uh, what I hear is that 2 to the 0 should equal 0. The reasoning goes something like this. When they see 2 to the 3rd, they think multiply the number 2 3 times, which is the number that you see in the base. And here are 3 2's being multiplied. 1, 2, 3. Then 2 squared, multiply 2 twice. 1, 2. And here, 2 to the 1st, just have it once. You don't have to multiply it at all. It's just itself. So then 2 to the 0 would, of course, be 2 multiplied no times. In other words, it's just 0. Now, from this perspective, it does seem that 2 to the 0 should equal 0. But if we step back and look at another aspect of this pattern, we can see that maybe that's not the most reasonable choice. And if we look at over here, if we look at the results, the powers, the third power of 2, which is 8, the second power of 2, which is 4, and the first power of 2, which is 2, we can see that something beautiful is happening, right? something so simple. As we jump down from 2 to the third to 2 squared, what do we see? We see that our value is being cut in half, or in other words, being divided by 2. Cut in half, divided by 2, same thing, right? 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. But this 0 here, it's just so ugly, right? How could we take 2 and divide it to get 0? There's no way of doing that. It doesn't fit this part of the pattern. So we discovered part of a pattern that we think leads to 0, and we justify it by saying it's no 2's being multiplied. And that kind of works, except it doesn't fit this part of the pattern here. So we want to define 2 to the 0 in a way that fits every aspect of this pattern. In other words, we need to come up with a value for 2 to the 0 that fits the number of 2's we're expanding here and fits the values that we're um, expressing over here. And that number, the number that does this, is the number 1. And here, we might not be able to see it right away, it actually fits the pattern beautifully. Here's what I mean. First of all, the halving, or dividing by 2, is maintained. So in other words, we start at 8, divided by 2, we get 4, divided by 2, we get 2, and divided by 2, we get 1. So if 2 to the 0 equals 1, it fits that pattern. But it also fits the pattern or we have over here, although it doesn't seem that way yet. We can fix it by just multiplying each expression by 1. Right? Multiplying by 1 doesn't change your value. But 
it kind of reconstructs the whole expansion of these exponential forms in a way that beautifully fits this pattern. And we can do this in math. We can play with the numbers to elicit a pattern that reveals a beautiful aspect of mathematics. Here, it's simply just multiplying by the number 1 and rethinking the way we expand our exponential numbers that allows us to see this beautiful pattern. And here's the pattern I see. When we put the number 1 in place here, we can see that 2 to the 3rd means to take the number 1 and multiply it by 2, 1, 2, 3 times. And then here, for 2 squared, there's 1 less 2 now. We're multiplying the number 1 by 2 2 times. So this exponent tells us the number of times we're multiplying the number 1 by our base. If the number is 3 here, we multiply the number 1 by our base 2, 1, 2, 3 times. If the exponent is 2, we multiply the number 1 by our base 2, 2 times. So if the number here is 1, the exponent is 1, we multiply our, uh, the number 1 by our base once. And if the number is 0, we don't multiply the number 1 by anything at all. Now, once we've established this, right, once this definition has been set up, we've unlocked a whole area of mathematics with this awesome number zero. And that area of mathematics extends down here. We begin to allow ourselves to think, what would these numbers have to equal? What would the negative exponents have to equal? And that's where I'll leave you in this video. We'll come back to these negative exponents, which have a whole series of exciting properties in themselves. Thanks. I hope you're excited.